Hey guys, it's past my prime from Lee Chess. Uh, I'm rated about 2050 um, on a good day. Uh, trying to be a master, but it's hard. Okay, so uh, I was wanting to talk about the Tempest Chess Clock. Maybe do something like comparison and tear down stuff that possibly you're not seeing on other of the kind of marketing videos um, that say things like, it doesn't need batteries. You're like, well, the base doesn't need batteries. Of course, your phone has a battery in it. Um, so maybe that's a tongue-in-cheek comment. But as far as accessories to your phone, it doesn't need additional batteries, like a Bluetooth headset or a game controller or drone, whatever, you know. Um, the quality of it is remarkable. Um, it's kind of hard to convey. Sound? ASMR? There's like a buttery smooth leather here, like an Italian wallet or something. You know, you can scratch it like, like it's real leather, and you can rub it out like real leather, like a, like a baseball glove. Um, so it feels really great, and it's a huge touch surface there versus, you know, typically the, some of them have levers, um, DGT, and then these ones are little... I mean, I think I probably chose this because you could smash down at it, which you can certainly do here. That also sounds great compared to click clack. There's sound deadening in here, so I think someone asked about that, and I just wanted to show you. You can unclick that without breaking anything, and you see... How do I show that? There's a kind of something like a rubber or neoprene pad in there. And that's what's giving it that kind of Mercedes-Benz uh, door shutting sound versus Okay. It sounds good. It feels good. And you feel kind of this like massive weight to it. I think if you're worried about like, well, will it fall out? You know, that's a very expensive phone. That's an iPhone 12 Pro Max. You know, the big one with the cameras. It will not fall out. Even during a bullet game. Let me simulate a bullet game for you. Let me simulate playing with an idiot. It's solid. Other people were asking about, can it fit in every single case out there with every single phone out there? Like that's an impossible number of combinations. So the way they arrived at universal fit was to take, you know, what must be about 50 phone models out there and made sure that it fit all of them, you know, as is out of the box. And then leaving the question to, will it fit my particular case with my particular phone? I, they kind of said, like, it depends, you know, and maybe they're just covering their asses, but to be, I guess if you had a very large phone with a very large case, the answer is probably not, like a waterproof case or something, but if you have a medium phone with a medium case or a slim case and a giant phone, I think the answer is not a problem. It's only really governed by the width there, and there's room to spare here. Probably, I would say, like another three millimeters, and this is the maximum phone that Apple sells. Samsung's is a hair larger than this, I think, and they, they both fit the same, so, yeah. You know, if you're thinking, like, well, I don't know if I, how do I feel about docking my phone in something? You're like, well, <laughs> that's just a behavior change. I used to have a TomTom -tom GPS thing in my car, and I now use my phone. I used to have a Garmin trip computer thing on my bike. I now have a holder on my bike handlebars that holds my phone because uh, it's a better screen. It's a better user interface. It's a better computer. It's got a GPS in it. You know, I just have over time learned to see my phone as like that's the hub of everything. And just in different contexts, you may have different holders. Um, and I think that's, the, that's what this proposition is. So here you see you can switch between analog and digital over time and sudden death. Chess, sudden death. Over time, that's like Scrabble. You're allowed to go past zero and take some penalty points if you do. Um, 
That's, that's how easy it is to switch from analog to digital. I should say about the analog, it's actually kind of cool. I grew up on analog clocks and I love them. Uh, but let's say we're going 5-0. That was what we used to play, Blitz 5-0. In the day, your five minutes would be, you'd set it between 11 and 12, so last five minutes to midnight. And so it's really hard to tell if the needle is pointing there and mine is pointing here. In that little time slice representing all your whole game in that little angle, you know, did you have four and a half minutes or three and three quarters minutes? But here, if you're, the, the clock face adapts. So it's like smarter than analog. It adapts to spread the time out more. So that, that full five minutes, that's a four minute mark. That's a three minute mark. So you can really tell the difference, like looking at it here, who's got four and a half minutes and who's got five. And that's pretty hard to tell when you're playing in that last five minute segment. So it's actually better than analog. Plus it has this like digital inset thing, uh, which is digital. Um, so if there's any doubt, you can see down to the hundredths of a second how accurate your timing is there. And that's a move timer in the middle. Two, three, four, five. What um, maybe wasn't shown in some of the videos was the full UI. So these are just presets. Three, two is common. Although, I don't know, this is so easy to set. I don't know why you would even need the presets, which is, I guess, a good thing that you don't even need easy buttons because the main way of setting is so easy. But um, one thing over the pandemic we got used to is like some courtesy time, like, could I have an extra 15 seconds? You know, I was looking out the window or my cat jumped off the table. You could, they, I don't know if that's borrowed from Lee Chess or you know what, but it's like a courtesy 15. So you can, I guess that's another way of setting the time. <laughs> Just realized that you could be like, yeah, Let's play a four minute game. Okay, go. Uh, so there's that. Uh, this, this is how you set between delay timing and increment timing. You just change that plus to a dot, dot, dot. Three, dot, 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 two. It's subtly different. Backgammon players use this. It's called Bronstein timing. And four, dot, 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 two. Okay. So we go, see it goes two, one, zero, and then it ticks. And then you make your move and it goes two, one, zero, then it ticks. But notice if I play fast, I never get out of that bonus time. So I never actually go over four minutes. Unlike increment timing, AKA Fisher timing, set like that, um, which does let you go up because it gives you two seconds every time you play. So subtle difference. I don't know why chess players don't use Bronstein timing, but it's just not in favor, so, but they're both there. And you have overtime in it. As a fun added feature, uh, there's a Fisher Random or Chess 960. Uh, I sometimes play it on Lee Chess, but um, probably never over the board because like how, the difficulty of, like how would, you, how would you do it? You probably need some app or dice or something. Um, to randomize the starting position, but also to guarantee it's legal. So you, you see the king is always between the rooks and the bishops are always on opposite colors. And if you don't like that setup and you, you know, agree, like, let's go again. Yeah, there you go. Hey, the two bishops were there last time. Is this really random? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so that's chess 960, a nice little add on there. Very pretty, it's like a slot machine. And away you go. Um, about the sound, you can unclick that. And here you'll see this like neoprene thud bumpers here that kind of deaden the sound, like the Mercedes door sound versus like a, it's subtle. It's still a snap, but it's like a thud snap compared to, about the weight, hard, hard to convey. I mean, you could kind of tell from the drops, kind of. Oh, shit. I'll stop the video. Well, actually, I'll, I'll let the video go. This is real. Oh, shit. Un unintended, but not unexpected. Give me a sec.
Okay. Um, so that weighs 397. This weighs 690. I guess it depends on your phone too, but fully weighted, you know, is that double? No, but it's 300 grams heavier. Um, it's just heavy. It's sturdy. It's like, how to describe that? The, the joy of playing with a properly weighted Staunton set. You know, it just feels incredible in your hand. I mean, it's a game we love, but the equipment is part of that. And having it look right and feel right with this, you know, high, high touch, Italian baby smooth leather um, just looks right with like these pieces. Looks right, feels great. The UI is just best in class. And you're never touching your phone, which is kind of icky to have other people touching your phone if it's one of those like phone apps. Those wander around the table, you can't slam them. You do have to look at it when you're touching. This one you don't have to look at. All the benefits of the traditional form factor. You just gotta get over the mental hurdle like with bicycle computers or running uh, companions on your, you know, when you're running or in your car, GPS, docking your phone is sort of part of that new behavior. Um, yeah. And if not, you can always have a $5 phone, uh, clock thrown in your bag in case you prefer that or regulation rules come into play or something. Um, but one thing that wasn't really mentioned was if you have an old device, that would be a perfect permanent use for that. It, it, so you, it's not like, uh, what if I uh, don't want to dock my phone in it? You're like, just how about something that's at the back of your junk drawer? Um, that's an earth-friendly play. If you could find it a second life and just have it permanently docked as your, that's your, like that just goes in your bag. Some iPod touch from, you know, four years ago. So, uh, I don't know, food for thought, interesting. Hope you enjoyed the review.